Hi guys, my name is Jason and I'm currently a fourth year medical student. So in this video I'm just going to explain how you can make the most out of your medicine block in third year. So first off I'd just like to give you a warm welcome to the medicine block. Although it's definitely one of the most content heavy blocks of the year, it's definitely easily manageable if you stay on top of your work and stay organised. So I'm just going to start off by explaining exactly what the block entails. This block encompasses the following specialties. There's nephrology, older persons, infectious diseases, respiratory, cardiology, diabetes and endocrinology, rheumatology, gastrointestinal and hepatology, and acute medicine. The general structure of a day in any of these specialties can vary just depending on which specialty you're doing that week, but in general you have a handover first thing in the morning and then you go do a ward round. Um, this can take you up to until lunch, so normally I'd go and have lunch just to have a quick break and uh, I'd come back in the afternoon just to find patients to practice some examinations or maybe do some jobs like taking bloods for example. There's also opportunities for you guys to go and have some clinical experience but unfortunately this has been limited recently due to the need for social distancing so hopefully you guys will still have an experience of that but it's a bit less than what we'd normally get. And of course, you guys will be doing your medicine block in different places. So some of you will be in Leicester, some of you will be in Peterborough, for example. And it's important to note that um, although some things may vary from trust to trust, uh, the experience should really be the same and you should be able to meet all your learning objectives no matter where you've been placed. So just some general tips so you can make the most out of this block. The first thing, and I think is the most important thing, is really to stay organised. Now, I'm sure you guys have your own methods of um, staying organised from your first two years of medical school. Um, but I think it's important just to just make sure you're on top of everything because it can really easily pile up. And essentially, I think you should try and aim to do just a bit of work every day. Now, obviously, this may vary depending on your other commitments, but I think it's a good general rule. The second thing I want to mention is in your workbook, um, there's a set of questions for each specialty that you're going to be doing every week. It's probably a good idea for you guys to do this as you go. So as I said, it doesn't pile up. And it's also important to note that your supervisor will be checking your workbook um, at the end just to make sure that you've done your questions. And this will allow you to get signed off for the whole block. The third thing I want to talk about is all about getting involved while you're in placement. Now this can be hard because you don't really want to be a burden, for example, to your doctor. I mean, that's how I found it when I was doing my block. And of course, the opportunities that you might have may vary from depending on the block. And it also may depend on which specific doctor you've been placed with. But if you put yourself out there and show some enthusiasm, I think the doctors will be a lot more happy to teach you, providing that they're not too busy, of course. One thing you might want to try to do during the placement is writing up patient notes uh, while you're doing the ward round. Essentially, it's just sort of an S-bar of the patient as you go see them. You basically review previous patient notes and write that up and then write up what you see of the patient um, when you do see them for the ward round. And uh, finally, you also write up any plans that you need to do. Uh, obviously, there's no pressure when you're doing this because it's just practice and anything you write up will um, always be checked by someone more senior to you. The other things you wanna to try to find opportunities for are taking history and doing clinical skills. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, there's a, a few clinical skills you need to get signed off in your workbook. And what I did with regard to taking patient history was I went up to a doctor and I asked if there were any interesting patients to take a history from on the ward. Um, and after I did take history from them, I tried to present it to that same doctor and uh, see if I can get any feedback on that. And then straight afterwards, I tried to review the patient notes just to make sure that I, I've sort of got everything from the history. The fourth thing I want to mention is that you want to see as many patients as you can, take as many histories as you can, and practice as many examinations as you can. The main aim of trying to see as many patients as you can is just basically trying to see as many abnormal signs as you can, and actually found it a lot easier for my end of block OSCEs and my end of year OSCEs um, if I'd seen that specific sign just because it makes it a lot easier to remember. I find it a lot easier to remember a sign if I've actually seen it on a patient. One thing I do want to mention, which I didn't really practice as much, but in hindsight, I definitely would have done, is to try and practice your timings um, when you see a patient um, in preparation for your OSCEs, basically. So in an OSCE station, you get around 
eight minutes to do a history or an examination and around two minutes to present. So what I would recommend you guys do is um, time uh, when you're taking a history or doing an exam, as in get a friend to time you. And um, after those eight minutes, basically try to stop and then present it to your friend who's been timing you and see if you've missed anything. Um, I think if you put yourself in sort of a more high pressure environment, I guess, because you're timing yourself, um, it sort of makes you more comfortable with having to take a history within eight minutes or doing an exam within eight minutes. And I think this, this will really prepare you for your OSCEs. So when I wasn't on the ward, uh, my main method of revising was practicing questions on past med. Now, if you're not aware of what exactly PassMed is, it's essentially a, a website full of questions, as in a question bank. And I found it really useful because their questions were really geared towards clinical signs, clinical symptoms, and uh, essentially the questions are quite similar to the questions that you'd get in your end of, end of year exams, end of block exams as well. Um, so what I did was uh, I signed up for it as soon as I could. The main disadvantage of PassMed is that, unfortunately, you are going to have to pay for it. But I think it's definitely worth the price that you pay for it. And PassMed definitely helped when I was doing my SBAs because it sort of just put you back into that mindset of doing multiple choice questions. The next thing I want to mention is that there are some online vids for you guys to check out on Blackboard. And we also have a Medicine Block YouTube channel. Um, unfortunately, uh, as of right now, there's not too many videos there so far. But it is currently a work in progress and hopefully by the time you guys are having a look, uh, there are a lot more videos there and for you guys to use for your revision. Now for my next tip, um, I actually found it kind of hard to put into perspective exactly what I need to learn. Because as I'm sure you guys are aware, there is so much content to learn and it's often difficult to know exactly what you have to learn. But what I did to get around this is that I made sure I kept checking the learning objectives as I was doing my revision. Um, your learning objectives will be present in your workbook or it might be emailed to you, for example. But um, my main tip is basically just keep checking the learning objectives as you're learning because it, it really puts everything into perspective. And for me, I used it to guide my learning and it sort of made the content a lot more approachable. The last thing I want to mention is that if the ward is quiet, and there's not that many jobs to do and you feel like you've practiced your histories and exams enough that week, um, don't be afraid to leave for your own private learning. The uni has given us some guidance on how you should split your time between uh, you know, seeing patients and doing your own private study. And uh, they do advise us to be in clinical areas or in patient facing areas around 70% of our time uh, with the rest of the time going towards private learning. With regards to notes, I didn't really take too many notes uh, during the year. Um, I basically tried to focus on just doing question banks. But um, if notes is something that you feel like would help you, obviously don't be afraid to do it. And in terms of actually organising your notes, I found it helpful to go through specific headings and writing what you know about that specific condition. The headings which I used were the definition of the condition, the epidemiology, which helps me understand the relevance of the condition, the pathophysiology, the presentation of the condition, including its signs and symptoms, the causes of the condition, and if it's an infectious disease, uh, the most common microorganism which causes it, the relevant investigations you want to do for the condition, the types, if appropriate, of the condition, if there is any relevant scoring systems for it, the management of the condition, including if it's an acute emergency, if there's any conservative management at all, if there's any medical or surgical management as well, any serious complications or any other complications that you need to know about, and the progression of the disease. Now, if you guys aren't aware and you have a few more questions about the medicine block or anything phase two related, uh, Lusuma has published a guide, which I think they should have emailed to you by now, but if not, it, it will be available on their website. And I found it quite useful to have a quick look just so that I know exactly what to expect in phase two. And of course, as with everything, medicine block is really what you make out of it. It's important to seek out opportunities because it won't just fall into your lap. And this is what the uni term is self-directed learning. So that brings me to the end of this video. 
If you guys have any more questions um, that you might want to ask me, uh, you can drop me an email at any time. Uh, and my email is jpl17. And thank you guys for listening. Good luck for your future exams and I hope you enjoy MedBlock.